Greetings and welcome to another Diablo 2 Resurrected video. Today I want to present to you the Paladin as a viable ladder starting character. I'm gonna go through the gear which I would um, consider budget gear. So something that you can have early in the ladder after leveling up you find on your way. Maybe you have some minor traits here and there already but it's pretty much starter gear. And then we're gonna go over some of the builds which I consider viable enough in a budget gear to start farming with this character. In total we are speaking about uh, two builds which is one the Hammerdin, two the Foden Fist of Heaven and then I'm gonna touch a little bit on the uh, Smite Paladin as well but not too deeply. And also gonna complement this with some gameplay in between for these builds. So first of all the gear we go over it, this will stay the same throughout the builds. There's a slight variation in the Smiter Paladin, but this is um, what I would call a budget uh, gear. So the Spirit and the Crystal Sword. For the Foden, you can also maybe look like for some kind of Scepter that gives you like pl plus Fist to Heavens or something. That would be nice, but it's really hard to find. This Crystal Sword with four open tokens is way easier. Then with a lower helmet, you can farm this yourself. Then we have like a rare amulet with like plus one to skills and then some all resistances you're probably gonna find something even better but something around this uh, i would call like budget and pretty easy to to find uh, a spirit in a monarch shield right here and yeah before you <laughs> get angry in the comments about a monarch as a paladin of course you can also use a sacrum shield a sacred tark or something like that which is way better because it comes with inherent all resistances so look out for that uh, then a smoke armor, the Lum you can farm at Hell Countess. Um, so uh, it is a very, very versatile armor. You probably might not need it as much as a Paladin because if you have like a Sacrum Shield, you have a lot of all resistances already. So maybe you can also swap this out for a uh, Stealth still. Like Stealth, if you need some faster cast rate, if you don't happen to have Trine Ults, for example, you can use your Stealth for a long time. Inferno Strides uh, or something similar this, that gives you some resistances and faster run walk. Then Rings which give you resistances and maybe something to life. Um, or faster cast rate if you still need it for some breakpoints. Some Rare Sash with uh, resistances on it and life is nice. Uh, again a ring with like a little bit of resistance and then as I mentioned earlier either Trang Uls or some other bracers uh, or gloves that are giving you some life, um, like Sanders, I think I have them here, or maybe Chance Guards if you want some magic find. And just keep in mind uh, your breakpoints for the uh, Paladin, we are looking to reach 75% faster cast rate. So right now we have 90, so we could actually lose the Trang Uls and go for a 10% FCR ring or even have an FCR on the amulet. So there is some wiggle room. Of course, it also depends on how high your spirit rolls. These are both perfect on 35% FCR, so keep that in mind. But uh, ideally, you want to reach the 75% faster cast rate breakpoint. Uh, the one before is 48, which should be easy to achieve. And after is 125, which will be pretty hard on the budget. Uh, and yeah, that's, that's about it for the gear. As a mercenary, if you can already afford it or found a pole axe or something similar for open sockets, I mean, Ral Tier Tal Sol is not that expensive. You can farm these in Nightmare Counters, for example. If you want to have an inside mercenary to help with your mana and then give him maybe a treachery if you can already afford it, maybe the smoke armor that you might not need. And then if you can find Tal Rashas or a Crown of Thieves, uh, something with Life Lich would be nice. I think Bulwark is the new rune word that you want to use here so uh, this is a right nice budget setup holy freeze helps with survivability as well also i wanted to mention that i have a teleport staff on my second weapon slot so you can shop these and how to do that i will put a video in the description below so you can see how you get one of these it's very very handy to cross uh, gaps in the game and uh, just uh, get your mercenary where you want it. Also save him from death. And again, like go over walls from time to time. It is not that expensive to repair it, especially if you are farming and using it just from time to time. 
Now on to the skills. Um, first of all, I'm gonna reset here to show you where you wanna go when you are leveling up. So for leveling up, you wanna put in one into might and then followed up by resist fire because it will boost up your holy fire already. It's a very, very strong synergy. And if you reach level six, you put it in holy fire, just add it, add it, add it, because it will greatly increase your damage. And then later on, you put in one into seal, so you can use that for more damage. And then also you put in one into holy sheet later on, you can pump up your seal, you can pump up your holy fire, you can go down and uh, oh you don't need conviction but if you're playing in a group conviction is very nice also you can go to fanaticism later on and put in points in the salvation to get even more synergy here or put one to resist fire so basically you're pumping this up and if you're playing solo then you will reach a certain point uh, like nightmare act 4 where there's a lot of fire resistances and that's when you want to change your build uh, so that's what we're talking about now First build I want to touch on is the Hammerdin. And as for the Hammerdin, the build is as follows. You put in one into Smite, one into Holy Bolt. You, of course, max out Blessed Hammer and Charge and then Holy Shield, each one point. As for offensive auras, we need Blessed Aim for Synergy and Concentration, firstly. And then we pump into Blessed Aim until it's maxed out. And lastly, we need Vigor for another synergy for the Hammers. And there you go, that's already the build. And we still have 8 points remaining at level 85. That's where we pump it into Holy Shield. Uh, because we want to go for Max Block. Let's get some strength right here. We don't really need much. I mean, we have the Spur in the Monarch. That's why we have a lot of strength requirement. But if we use some other shield maybe this sacrum shield also has a high strength requirement uh, if you look at like a sacred targ it only has 86 so this would be ideal i uh, just give you some examples and then what you want to do is use your holy shield and then pump dexterity until you reach max block so at level 85 with holy shield on level 15 with plus the skills, we need uh, around 165 dexterity. Rest and vitality as usual, and that is the Hammerdin build for you. So now we're gonna go into some gameplay as the Hammerdin. We can, for example, go to a terror zone and there's some monsters because like, <laughs> this is just a little group. See if we can find something better than that. Get some champions. So they are like level 90. The terrorized zone is level 87. As always, the hammer bin is very, very strong in damage and also in survivability. You can like uh, dance between a vigor aura and concentration aura, just Remember to use your concentration aura before slinging your hammers because the damage difference is very significant. And yeah, there you go. This might not be the best area that is terrorized right now. It's fairly big. But we have like some uh, champion and unique packs here. With the current gear, we don't actually have cannot be frozen. If you find a Raven Frost or a Trang Wool's Belt, that would be great. Because we are walking pretty slow. It doesn't affect our casting speed, but of course it slows us down when walking around, which is a bit annoying. There's also Harp as a helmet option. The lore is uh, nice and all because it gives you plus two, one, two skills. But uh, if you don't have Can't Be Frozen, maybe a Harp Rune Bird would be better. Let's see if we can find one other champion bag. Anyways, the more important part is traveling pull. For me, it is a bit difficult and the mercenary will most likely die here. But it gives you great loot and it's a great farming spot and it's we are quickly reaching it here. We do tons of damage. 
course they also do tons of damage and conviction horrors up so of course the mercenary is gonna die but this is pretty hard right now but we did it so we can also farm this and over time if you find more gear you will get more uh, durable here and survive more and lastly i want to show you the cow level so here we are i got the leg for cow level let's open it up and the hammerdin is fairly okay in the cow level you don't get the bonus damage to like undeads and demons with the hammers because these are animal types but if we keep our distance we are actually doing doing okay of course especially if you're a curse like this it is uh, very very dangerous and the mercenary will most likely die here as we just saw this one has spectral hit i think they have a higher magic resistance i'm not sure though but yeah it's it's okay and we can even uh, deal with bigger packs hopefully i don't die here but it should be fine remember to step away a bit and there we go. I actually uh, find this to be very effective. I mean, you have to remember, our gear is not great. We have two spirits and that's it. Let's find another big pack. There it is. I actually really like this. And here you can uh, find not only a good portion of magic, rare and unique items or set items, but you can also find a lot of socketed items like this. To open socket ghost armor, we can make a stealth here. I mean, of course, we don't need it now anymore, but it's a good source, especially if you don't have magic find or very, very low or no magic find. It's a good source to find bases, and there are a lot of bases that are highly sought after. And that was the cow level. So, next up is the Fist of Heaven Paladin. Uh, the gear is the same as before. The attributes are fairly similar. Um, we have a little bit more in dexterity because of a holy shield. It's a little bit lower because we didn't have any points left. But as for the skills, of course, Fist of Heavens will be maxed out along with Holy Bolt. And then in Offensive Auras, we max out Holy Shock because it's a synergy on Fist of Heavens. And then Conviction is the aura that we have active and are using to lower the resistances of our enemies so we do more lightning damage. We cannot uh, raise the holy damage. Um, conviction aura like doesn't. there's no resistances for that. But uh, for the uh, lightning damage part, uh, we are good to go here. And then the rest of our points into holy shield. Mercenary also stays the same inside. is very, very useful and helpful on that. And then into some gameplay of the Foden. So keep in mind the really good damage comes from fighting demons and undeads. So there are some animal types that we're really struggling with. So I don't recommend this for a playthrough as much if you are solo. Because you could be looking at some animal type monsters that take a long time. You will still do the lightning damage portion of Fist of Heavens. But Holy Ball will do nothing and all the holy damage has no effect as you can see here against demons it's very effective we can also spam holy bolt if we want to also um, heal our mercenary but yeah again like animal type Monsters are very difficult with this and take a long time, so I don't recommend going into the cow level with this. We can farm Eldritch and Shank. We can also farm Heo Sanctuary. And Fist of Heaven has a short uh, internal cooldown, as you might have seen. So even though you have more FCR, it um, doesn't really change much. Uh, only Holy Bolt benefits from it. 
take a look at uh, Travinko. This one is a bit harder, again. Here are animal type monsters, as you can see. We're not really doing much damage to them. Only single target. Thankfully though, the council are demons. And as you can see, we can also attack them from below here. I mean, all the Hydras, of course, are attacking us. We can change the position. And it's fairly easy to kill them. Let's get our mercenary back and take a look at the Chaos Sanctuary. So this is where our teleport staff comes in handy. Because Ruo Flame reaching Chaos Sanctuary is really a hassle. So we can just teleport over here, over here, just go straight. And one more time and then we're there but you can also kill all these it's also level 85 area which drops every possible item in the game I would say we're doing all right here it's not like the greatest kill speed but you have to keep in mind our gear it's very budget and look at this doing huge amounts of damage because venom lords have more HP but the storm casters don't and also the knights very very smooth can keep our distance this is the advantage of the Foden you can keep your distance you don't have to go up close like the Hamadin you could even uh, not go max block on this if you like. It's more like a ca caster in that regard. I mean, Hammond is also a caster, of course, but it's like kind of a melee caster. Uh, the disadvantage, of course, is that we struggle against animal type monsters. So if you want to farm Terrosones, and it's a bad Terrosone for you, like for example, Far Oasis has a lot of the uh, beetles that are all animal type. That's a bit annoying and not really suitable, but you can just uh, go to Chaos Sanctuary then. Take your business there. And yeah. No problem at all. Oops. Apparently, I can also just do Fist of Heavens nowhere. <laughs> so with control I have to target something. But this is actually amazing. Feels great. Plays very smooth. That's Chaos Sanctuary for you. Um, I could go on, but it's just more of the same. I think it gave you a good idea about the Foden in Chaos Sanctuary. Lastly, I want to give an honorable mention to the Smite Paladin. Just to quickly go over the skills, we put in one point into these to reach redemption if you need some mana back and health, and to salvation if you need to resist all, max out resist lightning for maximum lightning resist. Rest of all points and resist fire. And we max out fanaticism. We max out smite, which always hits, but it's only single target. And we max out holy shield to get even more damage out of it. As for gear, it stays the same for now. And we have a gemmed sacred heart to get a huge all resist bonus. Uh, because what you do with a smite paladin, and you can do this in a budget, is do ubers. So you want to gear for uh, like against the conviction aura of Mephisto. Uh, you have to swap out some more gear, I guess, to uh, like effectively give you. Whoops, I don't need this. Uh, give you more chances against it. Like I don't have the 
most experience with a smiter. I still need to get into that and maybe make a video on its own for it. But I just wanted to mention it briefly here that it's also a budget variant, but it is for a specific purpose and that is doing Uber Tristam early on. So this is it uh, for the Paladin and the Leather Stabbing character. I think this is a very, very good choice uh, because it's very strong at farming early on, even with budget gear, as you've seen. Foden excels at decimating demons and undeads in Chaos Sanctuary or in Travinkle. Hamadin is very versatile all around, can farm Terror Zones, can farm Cow Level, can also farm Travinkle and Chaos Sanctuary, but has a harder time than the Foden because you need to go into melee range and since you have a budget gear and no CTA, the health is fairly low, but still very, very good character. Also, you can go as a Smite. There's also a hybrid option for like Hamadin and have Smite as well to do Uber. So you can farm the keys and do Uber Tristam yourself and sell these or offer services to do Uber Tristam. I think it's a great starting character, but let me know what you think about the Paladin as a starting character. And if you want to know more starter builds, other classes, check out the description below. There will be more letter starting build videos coming. And I also have some budget builds already on the channel thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this kind of video if you did please hit the like button and consider subscribing for more videos like this in the future until then good luck have fun and goodbye